position. You know, tonight, you know, when you talk about the pink game, it's always a really special game, right? And especially when we get to play this at home. And I think, you know, when you talk about all of the people that are coming tonight, and you know, have, you know, a lot of people have stories that are coming in here today. They're going to be recognized at halftime. You know, they, 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 they have all, you know, gone through tough times. When, when you talk about, um, you know, the first time you get that diagnosis. Hi, I'm Carol Harris. I'm a cancer survivor. I have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the Governor Hogan's disease. And so, you know, we could go around, and I think each and every one of us in this locker room could go around. We've all been impacted in some way. There's, some, there's a story that we have all faced in, in terms of someone being impacted with cancer, right? All right? So you know, I mean, personally, in terms of this game for all of us, it has a, a deeper meaning. Okay, and anyone who has been through cancer or you've watched families go through it, all right, it's a fight. As soon as you get that diagnosis, you know you're in for a fight. I, I think it was very tough. Uh, lymphoma is a systemic cancer, so the, the only thing you can really get is chemo, and it was very harsh. But I went through it well, and I've been in remission for nine years. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. I mean, we get a gift every day that we get to go to practice. We get to have our health. All right? We get to play this game that we love. All right? Don't ever take it for granted. Don't ever take it for granted the day that you get to have every day we wake up and we get to play a game that we love to play. It's great that they have sort of a night for the cancer survivors. And there's so much of it, as I say, it's very popular. And it would be great if there could be a cure, but the treatments are getting better. And, and it means a lot because it is a life-changing event, uh, particularly as an adult. So I commend the uh, NCAA, the women's teams, for having this night. You know, this game always means a lot to us, you know, obviously from my end on uh, personal end, having been impacted uh, with it with my son Tyler. Uh, you know, just everything it symbolizes and represents. Uh, you know, it's a game, obviously, that, that we want to come out and we want to play for, for all of our fans. And um, it's a great game to be able to continue to bring awareness, especially to breast cancer, but, um, you know, all the different families that, that have been faced with a difficult situation, so to uh, shed light to it. I went to games when Weller was coaching, and I'm now totally uh, addicted. Uh, it's such a great program. You can really be proud, proud of the program. 100% graduation rate. We start three pre-meds. Uh, I think uh, one of our guards is in journalism school, getting her master's, and uh, Brene is an academic All-American. I mean, we're, we're really terrific. You know, it's also um, our boys' birthday, and uh, just the symbolism is kind of ironic. But, um, you know, the boys turned eight uh, today. You know, it, it's uh, hard to imagine. You know, we went back this morning at breakfast. Uh, my husband put on uh, at breakfast under the shell so uh, they could see, you know, what that episode looked like uh, when the team was down at Duke. and. Uh, we were, you know, uh, had a, an incredible day with the birth of them. So they loved it, you know, a special day between school and the game and a lot of activities, but um, it's just been an incredible ride for, for these past uh, eight years with, with the boys. I think that's what it's about, is that there's so much more to life than basketball. There's people out there fighting for their lives every single day. Um, they're not just playing basketball. We are blessed, we have great health. Um, we have a great opportunities here at the University of Maryland, and there's people out there who Aren't, don't have it as great as us. And so, you know, it's just, it's just a good opportunity to go out there and fight for those people to show that um, we care about them and we see their struggle and we, we're there for them. I think it's appropriate to kind of circle back on Valentine's Day. All right, when you talk about the significance of Valentine's Day, you talk about love, right? 
Okay, how does that correlate to the game, all right? How it correlates to the game, let's circle back to when you first fell in love with the game as a child. Okay, when you first fell in love with the game as a child, think about that. First time you were trying, to, Kiera, to, to make that first right-handed layup, all right? All of a sudden, you, you got good with that, then you went to the left, all right? And all of a sudden, your, your love, and, and it grew in the game, it became passion, right? And, and every step, you went from peewee ball probably to AAU to high school, you know, to being recruited, and, and now you're playing in, in a big time program, top five program in the country. And it evolved into your passion, right? Evolved into your passion. So I think about when you talk about championship teams, who you are, when you talk about elite level players, who you are, all right, you always talk about the passion that they have. And with that passion comes an edge every single time you step out on the floor, all right? There comes an edge. There's an edge that I get on the floor, I'm going to rip your heart out. I'm going to rip your heart out when I get on the floor, right? That's how you play. Every single time you step out on the floor, it's me against you. That's the mentality every single time you get an opportunity to play this game. You get to play this game that you love. You got to take advantage of it. You have to take advantage of it. We have to have, with five games remaining, we got to understand every possession matters and we got to have a mentality, I'm going to rip your heart out today and I'm going to rip it out every single possession that I get to have. Every single possession I get to have. You go out and you play Maryland basketball, we defend, we rebound, we run, and we send a message from the tip. Maryland with their starting five. There's the jumper up and in. Knocked down immediately by Shatori Walker Kimbrough. It's Brianna Jones for the easy land. Great find, good eyes up. Open look, she takes it. There's the top three point shooter in the nation. And when you shoot, 57% from three-point range, you get shots like that to go. We came out ready to play. I thought you know, we threw the first punch, 25-5. Uh, to five. I mean, the, the game was really effortlessly for us. I mean, we were defending uh, in all ways, made it difficult for them to score. And then offensively, uh, we were just clicking on all cylinders, uh, in transition, moving, moving the ball. But uh, like any game, uh, you know, Northwestern has great pride. They came back uh, with a great punch of their own. Uh, especially in the third and fourth quarter, they, they cut the game uh, into single digits. So then it became uh, a real fight uh, back and forth. It was physical, it was aggressive. Both teams competing extremely hard. Uh, you know, we had to really focus late game uh, in terms of execution. You know, I thought we did a really nice job uh, with our late game execution and fortunate to be able to get a win on the road against a really good team. Great job down the stretch, all right? Tough place to play, all right? Tough place to play. My Valentine's Day, all my favorite candy. Milk Duds, my mom knows me. Every time we go to the movies, I absolutely love Milk Duds. There's a lot of other things, but I don't want to get in trouble by Coach Pat and Megan. Chocolate? Chocolate and it's not just a chocolate. It's a, it's a chocolate heart. Telling me how much she loves me. I love my mom with all my heart. And I love my my Chloe with all my heart too. I was getting ready to say pumpkin on camera. Oh, you already did. <laughs> Sorry, you're my favorite player. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, she's so happy. It was great meeting you. Oh, look at her. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. <laughs> I'm really happy that I got to meet you because it's my favorite team ever. Are you serious? That's awesome. How, what grade are you in? Um, six. Six? Oh, yeah. How did we become your favorite team? <laughs> my dad went to Maryland, so he got me into basketball and just your team. And so oh so my much. gosh, what are you crying for? This is awesome. I'm so glad you could come to the game. Oh, they're wow. just, they're such a good team. They all work so well together. And the teamwork, like you can see that they're all friends and that they all care for each other. Oh. And then when they play, they're all just such a good team. There's so much talent. You're super sweet. Let's get a pitch. Yeah, it was really neat, uh, you know, to be able to be introduced to the young 
girl that um, loves Maryland and, and loves the game and just a, a huge fan. Uh, her dad went to Maryland and uh, you know for me to be introduced to her she was shaking she was crying but I mean in that is just uh, you know to, to be able to see that joy you know the the pure love and, and passion that she has for our team and our program uh, was something I, I haven't seen in a really long time so really special meeting you know uh, for both of us you know in terms of just seeing that pure joy that, that she has for our program. Yes. Basketball is it's my favorite, favorite sport. sport. I love the way I dribble up and down the court. I keep it so fresh on the microphone. I got no interruption in the game. My major is kinesiology. I'm majoring in neurobiology and physiology. Um, well, my major is kinesiology. I think I decided I wanted to pursue a science major and uh, go into pre-med when I was younger. Uh, I always tell my mom I wanted to be a doctor. And I went through a brief uh, stint where I wanted to be a forensic scientist, probably from watching too much TV. But uh, uh, after high school and getting back into uh, science classes, I think I uh, pushed more to wanting to be a doctor to uh, be able to help people. I never really knew growing up what I wanted to do. I knew I loved sports and I wanted to be involved in sports. It wasn't until probably high school in my sophomore or junior year when I decided that pre-med or medical school would be something that really interested me, uh, especially seeing all my friends go through torn ACLs, torn labrums, all the major injuries that are so devastating to athletes. And I thought, wow, it would be so cool to be able to help help give back to the athletic community. And I think the human body is incredibly fascinating, so it was definitely a bring, bring together my two passions. I came in, I really thought I wanted to do physical therapy and go to PT school. Uh, and then I took this anatomy class and the teacher just, she talked a lot about diseases and um, the body and what happens when you get sick and everything. And that just really made me want to go more towards the medical field. And I think just, I always knew I wanted to be in a profession where I'm helping people and around people. So I think that that's what's really drawn me to the medical field. Big in my mind is uh, cardiology because um, being a kinesiology major, you, you learned a lot about the heart and the cardiovascular system. I took an exercise physiology class which focused a lot on the heart and it was super interesting to me and so I think that that's always drawn me to it. Um, I joked with my mom before that the heart, because I'm such a um, caring about people and love is a big part of my life and I everything I do stems off of love, um, whether it be schoolwork, the people I have in my life and so just I think that that's interesting that the heart has been what I've been drawn to. Um, I think coming in I knew it was going to be easy and I think it's a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be uh, just balancing when getting when I'll be able to get work done and uh, when I'll be able to study for tests and then also get in the gym and work on my game to uh, better myself. I think it's just a lot tougher than I expected um, to balance that time. I think initially it was actually easier than I expected because everyone is constantly saying how difficult it is to be a student athlete and to juggle everything. But I think I had a ton of practice growing up playing three sports my whole life and I traveled with all of them. Um, until my sophomore year of high school, so I knew how to manage my time really well. So coming to Maryland my, my first year, I actually felt like I had a lot of free time compared to what I was used to with only playing one sport instead of three. Um, this year has been a little bit more challenging with more labs and difficult, more difficult classes, but I still think that it's easier to manage as long as you're really effective with your time, which is a skill that I've been naturally blessed with for my life. I normally, I wake up around eight or nine, depending on what class I have that day, and then I go to class. So then we have practice, I try to get some shots up after practice. Do our lift, have correctives, whatever the basketball side of things entails for that day. I try to get here as early as possible for practice to get shots up, because a lot of time after practice, either the men are on or I'm going to class. And then um, I might have a class after, I might have a tutor or, studying for a test or homework for a lab. Then go back and do a lot of homework and then go to sleep. One thing that I learned very quickly last semester was that I hated having classes after practice. And so I've learned that I schedule all my classes early in the morning before practice so that once practice is over, I can lock into doing homework and getting work done rather than worrying about getting to another class, etc. Uh, all the time, uh, we sit in the room <laughs> wondering uh, why do we put ourselves through this, but then uh, we think back to like why we wanted to do it, and I think that just motivates us and we keep each other motivated. 
Yeah, we all three live together. Um, me and Brie live on the same side of the room and Kristen lives right on the other side. Um, so um, I know I spend a lot of time in the living room doing homework and Kristen, Kristen more so likes to be in her room, but it's literally, if I have a question, I just get up and I knock on her door and I'm like, Kristen, and I pop my head in. Um, we work on homework together when we can. Um, I mean, we can all the time, but like, if we're not understanding something, we work on it together, which is awesome. So having those two, having Melina and Brie as teammates as well as roommates makes it a lot easier because you know that you can kind of relate with them and they, they feel your pain some days of trying to get work done. And it's, it's definitely nice to have that kind of support that really understands what you're going through and having that back and forth to be able to help each other out. Well, I think that um, the Elite Nine Award was awesome to win. I think that just, the, I've had a lot of academic awards um, in my time here and so just, I think that at the end of the day, if I'm like really stressed about school, I just have to sit back and be like, you're, you're fine, you're gonna be fine. I've been doing the right things and I have people to help me along the way here, which has been the best part. Coach B was very straightforward early on and promoting me to pursue whatever I wanted. And that was something that really jumped out to me about Maryland and what I loved about their program is that it wasn't just about you as a basketball player, it was about you as a person, you pursuing your passions and setting yourself up for a successful life beyond basketball. I don't know exactly if I'm gonna go right to med school, um, if I'm gonna try to pursue more basketball, um, what exactly is gonna occur, but um, I'm just really trying to focus right now on this next month, um, enjoying um, the team and this atmosphere because it's never going to be like this again. You're never going to get to be a part of a, um, a Final Four team again. You're never going to be able to be able to be on a college basketball team, a part of such an amazing program and experience and with all these people. So just trying to cherish my teammates and the time that I have left um, a part of the Maryland program. All right, all right. Fraser. I've been a rebounder since 2006, the national championship year. I've been a rebounder for eight or nine or ten years. I've been a Terp fan since 1971, Justin Gazelle, Chris Wallet, a whole crew back in the 70s. I've been with the rebounders for since Brenda's third, second or third year here, but I've been a supporter of the program from Chris Weller's days, long before Brenda got here. And we're traveling to Rutgers because we enjoy supporting the Maryland women's basketball team. Best memory is probably an 06 championship run. Um, some close games and that, and got a chance in the Final Four to beat Carolina and Duke, which is always a, a good thing. Uh, the best memory was beating Duke at Duke when the kids were born. And the best moment with the rebounder is being with the members. So we have a national power here right in the D.C. area, so we got to support them. Uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing the Terps pick up another win at, as they say, up in New Jersey, the Rutgers. They're averaging 22 fewer points per game, and that was just too easy to jump. ...and get confidence more than anything, and she's done that. Walker Kimbrough with a great stop and pivot. That was a Hakeem the Dream post move right there, right? Shot clock inside 10. Tierney Furman in the lane. Tierney Furman is instant offense. Mosley to Convoy, you can't give her the open look. She let her go to work. She's got seven, Walker Kimbrough, the most effective three-point shooter in the country at 57%. Yeah, we knew coming in it was going to be um, a tough a tough game, just battling. I mean, they're a great team, athletic, um, but we had to slow ourselves down and not get caught up in the, the pace of the game or them speeding us up. And I thought our point guards, Bones and Chloe, did a great job at calming us down and executing on um, offense because they, they like to block shots. I thought Bree did a great job inside on, on Holiday um, going to work and um, KC knocking down threes. I thought we did, all did a great job offensively and defensively. Kaya, listen, I need you to sprint the floor in transition and I need you to be a monster on the glass, okay? Yes. Hitting for her 13th and 14th points. Here's Gillespie with a wide open jumper. She just told me to come in and give high energy. I need you to rebound, box out, just give effort. And those are all things like you can control, and those are all things you can contribute to the team. So that's what I just try to come in and do, even if shots aren't falling, which fortunately mine have been two yesterday. But even if they're not, you can just come in and rebound and sprint and give great effort. So that's just what I try to do every game when I come in. Coach always puts an emphasis on our bench points, and I think Kai was a great spark off the bench. Um, just her energy, she had blocked shots. She, 
making trail threes. I mean, she was definitely that spark that we needed today, and I thought she did a phenomenal job. You know, that 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 was a lot of fun today. I mean, and again, I mean, collectively, when you get to put, you know, every single one of you gets on the floor, I mean, that I mean, that's a, a dominating win. I mean, and I thought it started with your poise, all right? You know, I mean, Tori, you know, I mean, sometimes when I'm really hard on you equally as well, I thought you were phenomenal, phenomenal today, all right? Wow, all right? You got to hear both both ends of the spectrum, all right? And, you know, I mean, Kaya, be ready when your number's called. Um, it's fun. Uh, it's different, especially now. You know, when you're a freshman, you don't want to get in and make yourself look foolish. But when you have great teammates and they help fuel you and make you feel good, and you just have no choice but to get out there and show a little bit of swag. Because I think everybody on the team has some. So they just get me hype and just fuel me like Tori got an M1. And I just, I was at half court celebrating by myself. Parker shoots an acrobatic one. But the Walker Kimbrough at the other end of the foul. Maryland went 94 feet in a hurry. So it's just exciting and it's real fun, especially after playing a really fun game like that. 10 points, 100% free throw line, five assists. And Kaya Gillespie! No, <laughs> We're so appreciative of all the support that we have. You know, it's incredible to be able to walk out onto the court and see all of our fans that traveled up on our fan bus and, you know, that, that sea of red, you know, cheering us on. You know, it makes a big difference when you go on the road. And then, you know, after the games to be able to see, you know, the, the parents, the friends, the extended families, you know, for, for all, um, all of our players, uh, the support that we have, you know, incredible to see, you know, all the support that we have.